The whole world is talking about matter and how it's going to save your smart home. All of the new products, new or improved apps, and all of the marketing is about matter. But nobody's telling us how our old products will transition to this new world. With many of us having spent thousands of dollars on smart home products, this is the biggest question for us. Now, your old products won't just stop working, but companies will stop supporting them. Plus, the apps are moving quickly to accommodate matter, and this will accelerate the end of support. So how do you prepare? And better yet, how do you save all of those old devices you have in your home? Well, today's video has some solutions and some insight that'll save you thousands in unnecessary upgrades. Now, the best way to save your old gear is actually to have it just be Zigbee. In fact, if you have a Zigbee device today and you're worried about it, I'm gonna tell you that you're pretty much okay. There is a new part of the Zigbee standard that was just released and it will make your Zigbee devices behave almost identical to the Matter standard. So much so that I think this is where Zigbee gets integrated with Matter and they just become one thing. Now give me just a moment to flash my pretty banner up on screen and I'll explain how this works. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and my entire goal on the channel is to save you time in your life with technology. If you'd like a little more time in your life and you'd like to get a little more advanced in terms of the tech you use to do that, hit the subscribe button now. But let me get back to how this new part of Zigbee works. I'll start with a quick breakdown of Zigbee today. Now, Zigbee is a low power mesh network, which means a bunch of your smart gadgets can communicate between themselves using very low power radios. Some of the devices on the network can repeat signals and some cannot. However, you always have to have a hub that brings in new devices and controls existing ones. That hub always has an application used to do all of this. When you're adding a new Zigbee product, you use the application to instruct your hub to connect to the new device and then put it on the network. From that point, you have to do things like set up automations or create scenes all through the app. So if you want to turn the light bulb blue, you got to go into the app or you got to set up an automation that lets you change it to blue in some other way. Then the hub does its thing and you're good to go. In a lot of cases, a smart home hub doesn't provide the users everything that they want. And things like smart speakers have filled in the gaps around that. Users will connect their hub to the smart speaker application like Google Home, and then they will be able to control their devices by voice. So turn on the light blue. But the Matter standard is flipping all of this on its head. As soon as you plug in a Matter product and you have a phone sitting nearby, you'll get a notification and a prompt to set up the device. You then type in a code or you scan a QR code that sits on the device and then you can drop it in to multiple applications for control. So if you look at Zigbee, it's a bottom up setup process, whereas with Matter, it's more distribution immediately. Because Matter is doing this immediate distribution and your device is not attached to one specific hub, it can avoid common problems like extra latency in communication and duplicate, duplicate devices. devices. It can also limit the number of networks you're maintaining in a home. But that's another story for another day. But this new part of the Zigbee standard called Zigbee Direct does a very similar thing to Matter. Suddenly your phone is able to set up and control your entire network of Zigbee devices directly. That's because Zigbee Direct adds Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE to the specification. With that Bluetooth option, your phone can now directly connect to that specific device. It does that and then it can negotiate a connection to the rest of the Zigbee network. It can add the Zigbee Direct device and from that point forward, it can control 
any device on the rest of the Zigbee network. Okay, so Brian, you're telling me that my stinking phone can talk now to a Zigbee device and I gotta buy a new device, so this doesn't really help. Tell me something I care about. Fine, Mr. Negative Sassy Pants, let me give you what this does for you. The setup process for Zigbee Direct will be exactly the same as Matter. The only difference is that you won't have a QR code on your Zigbee device, so far. This suddenly exposes your existing Zigbee network to a massive amount of processing power that you already have in your home. If you think about what you have in your home that has Bluetooth Low Energy 4.0 or greater on it, the list will go something like this computers, phones and tablets, smart speakers, televisions, other hubs, and there's probably more you can think of. So number three, any hub with a BLE radio can now be, for all intents and purposes, a Zigbee hub. And number four, you won't necessarily need a dedicated hub. It becomes much more like matter where many hubs or controllers could be used with the same network of Zigbee devices. This I have to see in action, but it is the intention. So in case it wasn't clear, once you add a single Zigbee Direct device to your home, your Zigbee devices will behave a lot like matter, and this will fit really well into new ways that applications are being built, as it will be less and less about the company you bought the product from, and more and more about who you want to control it with. On the Zigbee front, you just gotta wait. But we don't just have Zigbee devices in our home, do we? And when you look at your home, you might find a number of other technologies in it. Those technologies could be Zigbee or Z-Wave, Thread, Wi-Fi, LoRa, Bluetooth, or even a lower frequency signal like Lutron uses on their Cassetta range. I think that's 433 megahertz. Now right now, a matter network can consist of Ethernet, Wi-Fi, 4G, or Thread devices. You can't use any of those other ones I mentioned. Side note, and for those of you wondering about Bluetooth, just understand that for the purposes of matter, Bluetooth is used only for device setup and not as a networking protocol. So what we need is a device that can bridge the gap between those other technologies and matter. The good news is that the folks over at the CSA had already imagined what this would be called. They called it a matter bridge because they are highly creative folks. A matter bridge will be a physical device that can do what is essentially translation work in order to connect those older technologies to the newer setup and control methods of matter. So let's pretend you have an existing Z-Wave smart lock in your home. You're so fancy. Now since it's a Z-Wave device, it has to connect to a Z-Wave hub. That means you have it connected today, but if that hub receives an update that allows it to become a matter bridge, your Z-Wave smart lock would become matter compatible. You wouldn't gain new features per se because the physical hardware on the smart lock is set. You would just gain more options for connecting that lock to matter controllers. So if your hub doesn't have a connection to Google Home today, suddenly you'd have that. Now today I can share with you a list of matter bridges that I know are coming. It won't cover every situation in every home, but I believe we'll continue to see announcements about hubs becoming matter bridges as we go through this year. In fact, it was just recently that Samsung said they were considering turning the V3 and here's the AO Tech hub into a matter bridge. I've also noticed that new hubs coming out today are often stating that they're a matter bridge and a matter controller. A great example of this is the upcoming Homey Pro, which is intended to be a bridge for Z-Wave, Zigbee, and more. But if your hub today never receives that bridge update, you might end up needing a new hub in order to connect a number of these older products to matter. That'll be your cost, but you should be able to save almost everything you have today. Now, as I was building this video, I was initially heavily focused on the technologies that weren't included in the Matter standard. However, 
As I looked deeper, I realized that both Wi-Fi and Thread will look like a pretty big problem to many of you. It's strange because that's what Matter uses, so you would think that the upgrade path would be very simple. To break this down, I'm going to start with Thread, since there are only a few products in the market today. In fact, most of the Thread devices available today are a border router. Side note, a border router is a device that helps to manage a Thread network. It's just like your Wi-Fi mesh at home, where you can have many and they relay signals along a path to get to the intended device. It's really the same thing as a hub, but with a fancy thread name. Now, border routers typically come in a smart speaker or another hub-like device. Sometimes they're tucked into routers or mesh Wi-Fi, and all of those were built with the intention of being matter controllers. That means they will update and be ready to go for you, so you don't need to worry about those. Also, if you're buying a Thread device today, and it is from Eve or Akara, you are safe to buy that, and it will have matter on it eventually if it doesn't already. If it's an existing Nanoleaf Thread product and you absolutely want matter compatibility, you should probably hold off. They have some new ones coming that are Thread and matter enabled, but the old stuff we're not totally clear on. However, Nanoleaf just told me that their Wi-Fi products would be getting a matter upgrade in the future. So it looks like Nanoleaf is moving towards matter compatibility, but Thread isn't clear yet. Every other Thread product, there is little to no information about a matter upgrade. And at this point, that says to me, nothing will happen. But I actually don't think you're gonna care. You will already have a number of border routers in your home, and that number will expand over time. So what would happen is that the product might not gain matter compatibility, but it would continue to work in the same way it always has. There are essentially two classes of Wi-Fi smart products today. Those that are to ya and those that aren't. At this point, I would say that the ones that are far outnumber the ones that aren't. So let's talk about the ones that are. Now, if you don't know who to ya is, they are a company that is intended to be almost turnkey for companies to create a smart product, like this bulb from Gosund. They provide everything from design, customization, manufacturing, certifications, and even can provide an app for you. Plus, they have their own Tuya app, and many people use the Smart Life app as the way to connect all of these Tuya devices to their home. Now, lots of companies are using Tuya, and while they might have their own app, it's just a skin over top of the existing Tuya app with branding for that company. But those companies are going to have to pay for their existing products to be updated, and it seems as though Tuya's solution for existing products is to provide a matter hub that includes a matter bridge. At that point, all of the Tuya products you have in your home are potentially going to become matter compatible. But that's not clear, and I want you to understand that any of these purchases right now are a risk. Why do I say that? Because I'm trying to keep you in the video. Just kidding, here's why. Number one, many companies who started with Tuya have come and gone in the last three years, so who knows what happens there. And number two, the Tuya Matter Hub is available to be sold to any of these companies. That means I could buy a Globe Matter Hub, but would I end up needing another for Brilliant or Jasco or Monster, or would I only need one to cover them all? Either way, Tuya isn't leaving any of their customers without an option, but that doesn't mean that their customer is going to provide you that option, and it's definitely not going to be free. Again though, it looks like a hub will solve most of this. But I thought Matter was hubless. <laughs> not funny, Brian. You know, for all the devices that aren't Tuya, I think what you will find is that most won't receive updates. For most companies, the requirements for a product to become Matter compatible wasn't something they were thinking about during the design. 
especially since most designs happen two to three years before a product is released. This means that a lot of them are not going to come along for the ride into matter. The other component to Wi-Fi devices is that there are so many different types of products. They aren't all your standard smart bulb or smart lock. The Wi-Fi world is where a lot of innovation happened over the last few years. So because the Matter standard only supports certain device types, not a camera today, many of those products will be left in the cold and can't receive an update. But that part of the discussion and the list of smart home products stated to get an upgrade to Matter are all in the video that's up on screen now. It'll tell you not only which products you have in your home that will get an update to Matter, but it will also tell you when that will start to happen. So check that out and get the full story on how to get your home ready for Matter. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.